Welcome to Lead Your Life, the podcast for people who are seeking harmony in business and in life. My name is Debbie Heiser, and I'm an inner mastery and business mindset coach and the chief igniter here at The Lit Up Life. I feel an urgency to help people let go of past messaging so that they can make a lot of money doing what they love without sacrificing what they value most. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Straight from the corners of my mind is where I Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Lead Your Life with Debbie Heiser. I am here today with Gary Waters, and he, I'll let him explain where he's from, but he's actually sitting in Vietnam right now at early wee hours of the morning as we record this. But um, I'm going to let Gary introduce himself, but I met Gary through a group kind of coaching experience, and I just love your energy, Gary, and the attention to detail around a person that you have. There's this energy that you give off that of care and concern and compassion for the person that you're talking with. And that comes through in any of those situations. So I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm super excited for you all to listen to this. And Gary, I want you to introduce yourself and share with the listeners what you do. What, how do you serve in the world? So hi, Debbie, it's, it's amazing to be with you. And thank you for having me on. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here and it was amazing to meet you you know when uh, we're in that group container together and uh, thank you also for your sweet words that's how I you know would love to be received by people so that's good to know that that's how you you saw me but yeah so I'm from uh, the southwest of the UK and as you said currently out in Vietnam and uh, the label that I go under is is as the mindset coach but that encompasses quite a lot but the, the way that I love to work is to to move from this space of love, kindness, compassion, zero judgment, and really get people's reality to get to the root cause of what's really going on for them, to enable them to, in essence, get out of suffering and start to create a, a limitless life. So, you know, in a very quick nutshell, that's that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm looking, as you said, for the clues like a mini detective when I'm speaking with people for the, the subconscious narratives that people are completely oblivious to, to discover those, you know, areas where they are feeling limited or where they're bumping up against the glass ceiling, uh, but they don't know why. And my role is to help them see that and then find freedom from it. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's me. <laughs> it's almost like you're a miner, right? Like you're going into the mining cave and trying to uncover like what's there and what's the diamond that's in there. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, there's, there's so many beautiful poetic ways of saying it, but, you know, we are the diamond and there's just often times we've covered ourselves in a lot of dirt and it's the polishing process to reveal the diamond that you are. So that's, you know, what I love to show people is that they don't see themselves as that. And when you can really reveal that, it, it just changes everything for them. Yeah. Now, Gary, I want to ask you because, well, I'm not going to share with you what I found. I'm a, I want your opinion first. But when you meet with clients and you talk to clients, are there different levels that people are willing to go in depth? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that's the one of the master arts of coaching. So I consider coach more of an art than a science. So it's it's being able to see where they're at. You know, when I got into personal growth and what I call personal undevelopment, yeah. uh, because, uh, you know, for me, it's about dissolving the persona that we believe ourselves to be. But, you know, if I go in at the deepest level with someone, there's this cascade that happens that's overwhelmed, leads to confusion, which leads to inaction. So for me, it's like I, I just get a sense for where they're at uh, and then I get, you know, a real idea as to how to speak with them as well. Some people are a super left brain and they want like neuroscience as an explanation, like give me the science. Right. And then others are just more into, let's call it the nonlinear, the quantum. And, you know, that's really fun for me because we get to dive into the deepest of of the work for me but it you know if I don't meet them where they're at then it can actually be really deleterious to their progress so it's it's spotting where they're at and then working themselves helping them kind of work that little bit deeper 
Yeah. And Gary, when you talk about that, I have two questions kind of to go off of this one. One is, what are some common themes that you see amongst clients that you work with, whether it be in a group setting or individually? Yeah. So for me, it, it boils down to the, the main construct of the ego. Uh, that was something that I've really, really just unpicked <laughs> it's been a passion of mine to, to, just, to, to just really see like the different ways in which that that shows up and we could kind of bucket it into three big buckets of some form of I'm not enough inadequacy some form of lack scarcity I don't have and then we then get into the fears of insecurity yeah I'm, I'm not gonna be okay in my future so it's it's really being able to hear in the language where people are stuck though there's obviously a lot of different ways in which that that can show up lots of different clues but for me that's where most people are trapped they don't feel they're enough they don't feel they have enough and they're they're hurt and they're scared as their their way of being but that's not how it presents for them it's normally for them it's out there the problem's out there and i've got to try it's over there (laughs) it's over there it's with them right so yeah that that would be what I would describe as the main areas. And then there's little bits of detail that obviously go into each one of those buckets. Yeah, it's interesting as you say that because I've been doing, obviously it's kind of that time of year and I was doing a lot of reflection on 2023 and really setting up my 2024, not only from a business plan and vision strategy perspective, but also my personal. And I I reread a statement that I listed down like about three years ago where I said, I am grown up and take 100% responsibility for my life. And so what I'm hearing you say too is a big piece of what you do, and I'm putting words in your mouth, so correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of what I'm hearing you say is you help people uncover these things and then take ownership of it so that they, because I find when you, when someone else takes some, like takes energy or whatever and thinks they're helping you, it's really not helping you. Like as a coach, I do some practices to make sure I give back what my clients need in order to heal. And so helping people take that responsibility and be aware that it's their responsibility, I'm hearing is part of what you do. Tell us a little bit about that process. How does that work? Yeah, so that's one of the main components of my work. When I really got it, it, because I used to be what I call the king of victim mode, right? It's just like everything was out there. It was happening to me. And when you really understand that, the how interwoven it is into how we speak and how we view ourselves victim is the the most powerless place to stand because you're constantly at the mercy of what other people think about you or what's happening in your circumstances and it's just fundamentally not true and when I got that and started to make that shift just to remove that from my language even if you get back to what I call neutral where you're just you know you're not going into you know an empowered way of speaking that's obviously better but to, to be able to realize, oh, wait a minute, like I believe that it's really over there with them that I feel the way that I do. And it's just not true, yeah. right? Yeah. And that can be really hard. And, you know, victim mode and being the victim is actually super juicy because we, we get a hit off it. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. like this weird <laughs> payoff. <laughs> yeah, it's just like if we can't be significant as, you know, how we portray ourselves in the world, then we can be the most significant victim. And people don't want to give that up. You know, so I, I used to add inches to all of my stories because it would give me get me more attention. Fundamentally, the reason why we often do it is because we just want to we just want to be loved. We just want to be accepted. And by being the victim, we get, you know, all of the love, all of the attention, all of the connection. Because on a deep, deep level, really that guarantees our survival. And for me, that's like the driving force behind all of our behavior. So yeah, victim is one of the most amazing things to to give up and replace that with personal responsibility because then you shift into power. Yeah, now it's, you know, no longer, life is not happening like to me. And, you know, most people then go into, well, life can then happen by me. You know, and then you get into like, I can do it and all of the motivational based coaching, which is how I entered personal growth. But what I love to show people is to get away from like to me, get away from by me because that's exhausting and instead get into life happens for me. 
Yeah. yeah, that's where you flow with life, where doors open effortlessly without you having to do anything. And that for me is just how I love to live my life most of the time. Doesn't mean I I don't shift into that buy me mode every now and again. If I've set a deadline and you know maybe I haven't planned this or something's happened, okay, that's fine. Occasionally that's okay. But for me, where life really shifted is to go into that flow, into life happens for me, including the events that my little ego sometimes doesn't want. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know about you, Gary, but I find uh, this might be a little too much information, but I find I don't watch the news. I don't I don't do certain things in my day to day routine that expose me to the culture of not taking accountability because I find it is for me, it's been easy to shift back into that victim mode or the rescuer, which I tend to, that was my mode of operation, the rescuer. And, and so there are things that I do in my life that help, help me try to stay out of that victim mode. And even we were talking a little bit before recording this, the importance of the linguistic environment when it comes to that. And so tell us a little bit about what are some of the things that you do to help keep yourself in the flow and out of the victim operating system in abundance, those types of things. Yeah. Just share that with us, what you do. Yeah. Great question. And so it's to, to really understand the difference between the inner world and the outer world. And, you know, outer world, there's definitely things that we can do to set ourselves up to win. You know, it's definitely turn off the news. Haven't watched it in about 12 years now. And, you know, if it's important enough, it finds me. Yes. So and it, and it has in, you know, big world events. So, yeah, for sure. There, there's certain things you can do. Uh, I have a morning practice that's an absolute non-negotiable for me. Right. So I'm speaking with you about like 640 my time or something like that. Um but that meant because I, I love to prepare and set my frequency for the day, I do my morning practice. So I was up at four, right? And so that involves moving my body. It involves uh, reciting the awareness shifts that I've learned over time that keep bringing me back to balance, right? And, and from that standpoint, it's I'm starting the day at a frequency that I want to go through for the rest of it. And it's so imperative for me. Now, can I miss a day every now and again? Yeah, I just did like a 15, 16 hour, like bit of traveling here, you know, but on the flight, I still kind of meditated. So, you know, I still, it, you can still build it into your day because I get a lot of people who have very busy lives where they have kids and, you know, that's another excuse to not do it. I get it, right? But it's still possible. And then that's more outer world things that you can do that, that are amazing, that help. But for me, the the ultimate setup is the inner world. Yeah. And, and this is the ability to learn how to really observe your mind. And this is where I work with clients to connect them with their true self. And this is where you're able to spot the thoughts, to spot the language that's coming up as a narrative that then cascades through into a feeling. And sometimes it's a feeling that you detect first, oftentimes, because there's more of a disturbance that you can detect. Thoughts are quite slippery. So how do I, you know, really set myself up is I'm very aware, very present of the content of my inner world. And sometimes it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, and it, it's, it's sometimes incredible. I'm like, oh, wow, you know, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> and, you know, I think as it relates to the previous iterations of myself, my past versions of my identity, which for me is a dissolution process of letting those go is to really embrace the the fact that those have been there for a long time and they can occasionally pop up but when they do what's so fun is to be able to spot those and wherever basically i feel a disturbance to the peace that i am yeah. that for me is the opportunity to go oh there's a little trigger there there's a little <laughs> yeah and for me i get so excited because it's showing me where i can't be okay with life it's showing me where i'm not free so for me, that's then a, a process of, of journaling. If, if it's really a sticky one, I'll go get mentorship. You know, I think we share, to, you know, some similar people we like to speak to. And from that standpoint, it's that that's my practice. It's it's awareness. 
Yeah. And Gary, I think you bring up a really important piece. And I know I've talked about this. I I am a coach and I have coaches because it, it's important, I've found, to be able to talk to other people that have different perspectives about something that also align with my values because it helps me see things differently. And to that point, being aware internally, you're aware based on your own filters. Mm. And so having someone like you or me to be able to then, it's not really bounce things off of, that's not the right terminology that I want to use, but being able to have that conversation and go to a depth that allows you to have that self-awareness and and find that teacher within. That's part of what I'm hearing you say. Um, Parker Palmer, one of my favorite authors, talks about helping people find their teacher within. Mm. And that's part of what I'm hearing you say, that you're finding your own teacher within. And sometimes that includes some outside sources to help you work through that. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, for me, where we, we find more joy is... Yeah in the awareness rather than what we do yeah you know we could have a fear about something like as i'm talking with you there's like a beautiful ocean in the background right and but there's no there's no edge to it and you know in previous times we might have feared falling over the edge and that was the end of the world yeah but from awareness going up we now dissolve that fear you know we now know that that's not the edge of the world and then that makes space for for more to be possible for us so, you know, it's it's beautiful when we get that out of reflection. There's a humility in that mm-hmm. to go, I don't know everything and I've not been everywhere. And for someone else to be able to contribute to me is the way that I up level. Yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of gets me out of my ego <laughs> and allows, <laughs> you know, that that expansion because when we're so close to our own stuff, it's hard sometimes to to see it. And I love too, when you talk about the expansion and how you were referring to what I call the growth edge, like I'll look at something and go, oh, isn't that interesting how that's coming up again for me? And Mm -hmm. what is that really about? And to your point, that feeling of almost joy for me, you talked about it being joy in the respect that it, it allows you then to go forward into that and be able to remove that so that you have the peace that you have. And it took me a while to get to that point. And to your point earlier, I'm not perfect at this. And there are still times, I mean, I love my sister. And after spending a week with her and her family, I realized some things about myself, not about them, but about myself that I was like, oh, that's so interesting. And it (laughs) it helps you step into that and change it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, hopefully this th- doesn't get bleeped out but i call it the gift wrapped and shit oh yeah no it won't be <laughs> <laughs> right and it's uh, the reason why i call it that is because in the in that moment it doesn't feel good yeah. right but underneath it a bit i probably could have used a bit more poetic talked about the diamond and <laughs> but, um, you know it's it, it doesn't feel good in that moment but underneath it there is a gift to be unwrapped and unpacked which is for us to go oh wow there's an area here where i'm stuck where i can't maintain my peace and for that all of these people around us instead of viewing them as like some form of like they did that to me that's the victim mindset to go Oh, awesome. Like they're my greatest, you know, teachers here for my evolution. And that's a perspective shift that becomes really empowering, but it also enables us to meet people more with love, more with compassion. So, and it's having that love and compassion for ourselves, that zero judgment either side, you know, and that enables us to get out of the resistance, which is the glue that keeps us tied to it, to our story and to shift into acceptance. And from that place, we can do the work. Yeah. And for me, that's the biggest heartbreak, I guess, is the word I would use that I then also have to step back and say, I care a lot, but I don't worry about my clients. But it it does sometimes break my heart that they don't see themselves the same way that myself or other people see them. And I'm sure you run into that as well. Um, But allowing for them to be able to sometimes percolate, sometimes swim around in it and and be able to be that person that's kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, being an anchor for them. Yeah. Right. To then be able to experience that growth. So, yeah. Yes. To be that anchor, that safe harbor, 
where they feel that they can come, where they can express, where they can say, where they're mad, where they're stressed, you know, what, what's going on for them, what they don't understand. And it's that that safe space that really allows them to just be authentically them yeah. and still then move forward in an empowering way. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it can it's like for me, I, I just see everyone as beautiful. Yeah. But, and it's heartbreaking, as you said, to see like people suffering. But at the same time, that's that's their journey. And yeah. I, you know, I know how that story ends as long as they're in like the container with me is that like I just then get to witness something amazing which is their freedom from these 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 real limitations this prison cell that they're living within because in a way if they're suffering more when they break out it's even more like freedom that they and peace that they get to step into and the experience is is really beautiful to observe yeah uh, yeah and it's beautiful to experience right yeah and you know there's no greater gift for me is that that contribution to be able to share you know i've been in my own life to the to the lowest of the lows you know and it, it enables me to sit there in front of them and you know they them talking about wanting to leave the world and i'm just like i actually do know how you feel because i, I reached that point twice in my life yeah so it, it, so Gary, let's talk a little bit about that. This this podcast <laughs> is going to run longer than 20 minutes and I don't care as long as you don't. But I, I want to know a little bit about your story. Like what brought you into this container to serve people in this way? Yeah, breaking myself completely. Yeah. Uh, it was the, the the greatest breaking open uh, that I ever received. So it's it's actually right at the top of my gratitude list the the hardest moments in my life are right there at the top because without them I'm not the man I am now and I love the man that I am now and for me to be able to say that you know was something that I couldn't say because I, I used to hate myself yeah I used to really just not like myself at all and it was coming from this space of inadequacy I, I just I was not enough so the way I got there, I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up. Otherwise, we will be here for a long time, right? But it's the, I had, you know, I've got beautiful parents, feel very blessed. I was loved unconditionally, which is very rare. But my not enoughness, let's say, was turned on during school. I, I, I moved to Germany about eight, nine, and I was a foreigner and was not well received. Let's put it that way. So school for me was really tricky. And I was bullied due to my weight. So that set up inadequacy of my body. But fundamentally, what, you know, the experience I had was I was not loved. I was, I didn't belong. I wasn't accepted, which yeah. left me feeling incredibly isolated. And for a human being, that's one of the worst experiences you can have, even though I had the comfort of my family at home. But you're, the isolation is you're outside of the tribe. Yeah, outside of the community in primal times, our hard wiring is such that, you know, if we're isolated, kicked out of the, the group, that's a death threat. Yeah. And and that for a little guy that doesn't really understand, you know, we can't really process rationally beyond uh, before seven. So I'm just kind of in that age where I don't understand, like, what's going on. And because I had that um, that that shift from everything was amazing to suddenly, oh, I'm not accepted. That hit me even harder. So, you know, suffered with that for about three or four years, got to about 11 and then started to look to leave the world. Mm -hmm. And it, it's at that point, you know, my parents, they're beautiful. They saw it. We went back to the, to the UK. But what that set up and the reason I'm explaining it is that that turned on this not enoughness because I assert that we come here, cruise into this dimension with certain lessons that we've come here to learn. Right. And for me, that not enoughness got turned on. And that was the journey then that became about how can I be enough? If I'm not enough, then I've got to be perfect. Yeah. So I started the process. I've got to have the most amazing body. I've got to have all of the money. I've got to have the number one business. Yeah. All of these things. Then I'll be enough. Then I'll be happy. Then people will love and accept me. I'll feel like I belong. And fundamentally, I'll then feel at peace and safe. That's the that's the way we generally operate, yeah. right? So that though is an exhausting process. I was working 16 hour days. I was then working out for three hours a day because the body had to be right, you know? So if you do the maths, we're, we're there with not much sleep. Yeah. 
right? And then at the weekend, I would go out with the guys to feel like I had some kind of life, get get drunk, I never was into drugs or anything, but it was like drinking to try and compensate, to, that would soothe as well as an escapism. Mm -hmm. uh, never had a real problem with alcohol, but it, it facilitated like a, a level of peace, which can get really slippery. Yeah. yeah. Six years of that, bam, I kind of hit 29, 20, 28, 29, collapsed on my office floor, ironically having achieved a lot of the things that I thought would make me happy, that would make me perfect. The body was 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 chilled, right? Uh, the, the business was at number one. I was running a hotel at the time, you know, we turned it around being super resourceful, uh, had the car, had the girl, but I was miserable. I was depressed because yeah. when you're looking through the lens of I'm not enough, it doesn't matter what you do. Like on the other side of that lens, the lens is here and the true me's here. If I'm out just looking out, trying to fix not enoughness out here, yeah. it doesn't do anything because I haven't literally got to the root cause of the belief that I'm somehow not enough. Yeah. So that's an exhausting proposition. So uh, you, it's like a tunnel with no cheese, right? You don't get there. You can't get there, <laughs> right? <laughs> so yeah. it's really in that that realization that that then became my gateway into personal growth because it was life or death for me. It was like, I love my family. I want to stay in the world, but actually I don't. But what can be one thing that can really change it? And then I got into the real traditional, like Tony Robbins and... Yeah. You know, and then it shipped in, like slipped into other mentors, and and that was the start for me. And you know that that's been a progress now that was so wonderful because I didn't know the the industry of personal growth existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Gary, it, thank you because you were a big part of a big shift for me, and realizing that I was looking through the lens that there was something wrong with me right? Mm -hmm. That I wasn't enough. And, and I understand what you're saying too, and trying to live up to, for me, it was more of that, the value orientation of like achievement. And, and that's part of what I'm hearing you say and achieving the good grades and then achieving the, the things in sports and achieving the music accolades and the business accolades. And um, I remember distinctly a conversation. My sister was dating a doctor. My dad was so impressed with that. And I remember I was an adult, I had a child and I remember having this conversation and saying, dad, I'm five down from the CEO of Citibank. Like how, and I'm I was like, what am I doing? You know, I'm a grown adult. I don't have to compete with this guy that we don't even know. But it, that was part of the first awareness for me of that achievement orientation and how that shifts the entire, for me, it shifted my entire world. I mean, you and I met in September, like my world has shifted since then to unbelievable degrees. So I want to thank you for that and being a big part of that um, and your gift of being able to see that. And I, I want to like kind of end it. And part of this, we need to do another session. Just I'm gonna... <laughs> we'll do <a> fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do another session, maybe mid year, but we'll record pretty soon. But yeah. you know, you're living this life that you want other people to be able to live. You're traveling, going to places during the winter. You're doing the things that you've always wanted to do. And so hats off to you for doing that and living what, what you are coaching. And for me, that's a big value orientation. Um, like I like to have people in my life that are doing what they're coaching versus not being authentic, right? I guess is what I'm trying to say. So yeah. thank you for that. Um, and I do want to end with two kind of quick, fun questions. What was the best book you read in 2023? Oh, that's a really great question. So, you know, I'd say one of my, my main mentors is a guy called David R. Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And, oh, and yeah. he's, yeah, and he's, he wrote many books. Uh, you know, I'd say actually it was rereading my favorite book. And that was uh, power versus force. Ah, and I you just know, ordered that actually. Oh, please yeah. read it. <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah, he's done many. I mean, that's the entry level kind of kind of book to his work. That it then gets really deep, and it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that book for me, I I love rereading books that have had a profound impact because the version of me that sits down to read that book again is is a totally different me yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So as as I read it, I just get more and more. And it, it's quite a tough read at the start because it's quite sciencey. And for for my brain, it's not really geared that way, but I, I managed to stick it out. And I, I it's my Star Wars. You know, I've just I've, <laughs> I've read it so many times that uh, you know, it's pretty dog eared on the edges there. Yeah. But so yeah, I just I go back and I, I I'm always going back to basics. You know, I, I don't I don't com like I don't I don't make it too complex. Yeah, I'd say that that's my my gift as a coach is I take the real complex, make it simple. So I'm a simple dude. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I think sometimes I know I fall into this trap of trying to make things too complicated, and that is where my peace leaves because now I'm creating complication that doesn't need to be there. So I like the whole keep it sweet and simple um, aspect. And then if we were to whatever platform you listen to, if we were to go out to say your Spotify and find the most played song, what would that be? Oh, that's a really great question too. Uh, yeah, it depends. If I'm in the gym, then it's something up B, mm -hmm. right? So uh, da -da 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 -da. I love uh, a bit of Avicii. Okay. So when I'm working out or or David Guetta, Titanium's an awesome tune. Uh, okay. I've got some great memories to that. So yeah, if I'm working out, but generally I, I listen to more kind of more peaceful stuff. <laughs> but for some reason, maybe because I've got to go to the gym after we speak, uh, that's my mind. But yeah, stuff that, you know, what apparently is now old school, uh, yeah. that, that's been quite fun hitting 40 this year and realizing according to my niece and nephew that the music I listen to is old school I'm like oh okay that's interesting so uh, yeah. yeah mine must be retro if yours is old school <laughs> <laughs> but I love all that like I, I'm, I love music you know it's, it, I would say that uh, it's always been a big part of my life so I, I love that as a question here in this it's, yeah. it's amazing no worries I know my workout list is like Breaking Benjamin ACDC you know like all of these <laughs> really hard rock, like go at it kind of thing. So, but thank you for sharing that. And Gary, if someone wants to learn more about you, what you do, maybe even get in touch with you where we have a lot of things in the show notes for people to take a look at, but what would you recommend? Where would, where should they go first? Yeah. So I'd say my website is probably the best place. Um, that, that's garywaters.co.uk, but you know, for insights or anything, my Instagram, there's kind of two main places I, I really am. Uh, and which I am Gary Waters, but yeah, hopefully, you know, I, I do the Instagram just to add value. You yeah. know, there's, there's people that cannot afford to get in a one-to-one -one container with me. So, you know, I learned everything I did at the start for free because I didn't have the money to do it. You know, it's that being resourceful rather than having resources. So, you know, I like to, you know, pay that back and put out what I can for those that can't afford it. So, Perfect. Yeah, those two, two places. I kind of cheated. I said two, didn't I? Not one. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> and Gary, <laughs> if you're game, we might have to have another episode and really talk more about this linguistic environment piece. But yeah. um, folks, with that, Gary, thank you so much for being on today. I so appreciate you getting up early and wish you well as you go work out and explore a little bit of where you're at. Is it? It's the following day for you. So yeah. it's January 1st. Yeah, I'm January 5th. So it's, uh, yeah, okay. I'm ahead yet. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's perfect. And so thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all of the listeners for listening in. That's a wrap for this week. We'll see you next week. Let's face it, sometimes as an entrepreneur and a business leader, we need some guidance, support, and community. So we here at The Lit Up Life have three ways that you can work with us in order to achieve that. As a private client, we work together to quantum leap your business by discovering strategies to help you move past what's holding you back and allow you to identify what you want your life to look like. The result, your business becomes the conduit to the lifestyle, success, and impact that you intend. Now, I'm a huge believer in the power of collaboration. So in our community masterminds, you can join in with other high vibrational business owners who wanna level up, increase impact and financial gain, all with a tribe of other women to support and encourage you on your journey. Currently, we're accepting application for this Women's Mastermind Group, which is a year long program for women in business who are ready for that next level of success. We create deep personal awareness in a safe and supportive space where you can experience growth with others who are on that same path. 
through weekly sessions with our program coaches, teachings that go beyond the buzzwords, and immersive retreats in places like Mexico, the Dominican Republic, or Belize, we work together to create long-term abundance and lasting impact in your life and business. The last and final way to get involved with us is our group coaching programs. They provide the opportunity for teaching, masterminding, and feeling like you aren't alone on this ride. Come join us. That's a wrap for this conversation. I'm so glad you've joined us. Remember to subscribe to the podcast so you can catch all of our future episodes and visit us at thelituplife.com for details on how you can become part of the Lit Up Life community. A quick shout out to my friend Jackie Wilson and her friends, the creators of our amazing theme music. Thanks so much for allowing us to share this perfect song with our listeners. Looking forward to having you listen in to our next episode.